Today, October 17th, is the remembrance of St. Ignatius of Antioch in the liturgy. He's significant because he was martyred in Rome around the year 100. And on his way there to Rome, he wrote a series of pastoral letters where he reflects on his faith in Jesus Christ, the power of the gospel, uh, his own understanding of the meaning of his martyrdom, giving his life for Christ. But he also writes about uh, the church in his time. So we have kind of a snapshot of what the church looked like in those first decades after the Acts of the Apostles was finished. We see in his writings that already by the year 100, there was a hierarchical structure within the church, that people acknowledged the Bishop of Rome as, as the Pope, as the visible leader of the church, as the vicar of Christ, that there were bishops, there were priests, there were deacons. We also see there that the sacraments were, were clear, especially um, baptism, Eucharist, penance. We see there as well that uh, the church was understood to be universal, that it's particular in its local places, but it, it's one church open to all people. So really, Ignatius and the early church fathers serve as a needed bridge between the world of the New Testament and uh, the church as it was emerging towards the end of the Roman Empire into the Middle Ages. Many, many um, Protestant leaders have converted to Catholicism because they read the church fathers. And they realized that there isn't some sort of rupture between the New Testament and the church as it emerged in those first centuries. But, but there was a continuation. And we see then that everything that the Catholic Church is was already in its original form by the year 100 as it continued to emerge and evolve according to the Holy Spirit. So we thank Ignatius of Antioch not only for his heroic martyrdom, but for those very important pastoral letters that give us a connection between the early church and what we know the church to be today. St. Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us.